Welcome to Introduction to Philosophy. So uh, this is just an introductory lecture to the entire course. We're going to start off talking about what is philosophy because this whole class is an introduction to philosophy and so you might be wondering what is it an introduction to and the answer is that nobody really knows. Lots of people have different definitions of philosophy so if you ask some philosophers they'll tell you that philosophy is one thing or another, but nobody can agree on one, so everybody has different definitions. Uh, some people think of philosophy as uh, like the, the highest sort of inquiry, so uh, there are various fields in academia like science and other sorts of things, and then philosophy is the one that sort of sits on top of all of them and asks questions about all the other fields. Some people think of philosophy as the sort of inquiry that you can do uh, sort of without investigating the world at all, so you can sort of just sit in your armchair and study philosophy, whereas other fields you have to go out and learn about the world in various ways. Uh, other people have all sorts of other definitions of philosophy. We're not really going to worry about that because uh, basically the thought is the best way to learn what philosophy is, is by studying it and by doing it, and so that's what we're going to do in this course. So rather than Starting off wondering what is philosophy, we're just going to jump right into it, we're going to read it, we're going to write it, we're going to talk about it, and then by the end of the course you'll have a better picture of the sorts of things philosophy does. One of the things to say at the outset though is that philosophy is a very large field, and I've introduced or I've uh, structured this course to introduce you to lots of parts of philosophy. We're not even going to cover all the parts in this course because we're going to vote on some topics, and so we'll ignore the topics that we don't vote on. But uh, one of the things about philosophy is that it's just so big, so it's really impossible to get a good picture of all of philosophy. So really this is an introduction to some of philosophy. And the other thing to note at the outset is that as we go through each of the readings and each of the uh, units, and especially with the initial readings and the initial units that I've already picked out, I'll sort of uh, take time to point out in the lectures and probably in class discussion when we're talking about some part of philosophy or some other part of philosophy, and I'll talk a little bit about this part or this other part. Uh, and so even though at the outset I'm not saying anything at all about what philosophy is, we will get some information uh, as we move through the course about what is this field that I'm learning about. So that's part one of the lecture, what is philosophy? Now we're moving on to part two, reading philosophy. So on Canvas, there I have a longer video posted about how to read philosophy, where I sort of go through and I model the way that you want to read philosophy. I think if we have time, I'll try to do that exercise in that video in class on the first day. We may not have time, we'll have to see how it works. But whether or not we get around to doing that exercise, the important takeaway from that video, which I encourage you to watch if we don't do the exercise in class, is you want to be reading very carefully very slowly, paying attention to each sentence, thinking about each sentence, thinking about each word, and uh, a lot of the way that the course is set up is to guide you through that and to help you uh, focus on that. When we go through the syllabus in part four of this lecture, uh, you'll notice that a lot of the course is set up to get you focused on the readings in the right sort of way. So this point in this lecture right now is just to say a big chunk of this course is reading. Philosophy is all about reading and writing, and a lot of it's going to be reading. So get ready to read, and uh, really most of your time in this course is probably going to be spent focusing on the readings and reading the readings. So now part three, discussing philosophy. So uh, it's really hard to learn philosophy unless you sort of talk about it with people, and talking about it with me and with your classmates, and articulating your own thoughts is very important for learning, so uh, I encourage you to do that as much as possible. I know that's very difficult online if you're not able to attend our course like in the meetings at the time that's fine you can post on the discussion forums that we have on canvas and we'll, we'll record the meetings so that you can watch them later if you'd like if you can show up to the in-person meetings i encourage you to turn on your camera if you're able to if people have bandwidth troubles uh, so if their internet is too slow and people's cameras are slowing everybody down then we can change that and maybe you only turn on your camera when you're talking. But at least at the outset it would be nice if you can try to keep your camera on during our sessions. And then both in the face-to-face -face sessions online and then on the discussion boards, 
when you're discussing philosophy, the thing you want to keep in mind is that you always want to be kind to each other. So this sort of goes without saying, but it's always good to reiterate it, especially because sometimes when we're talking about philosophy, some topics like morality or politics, they can get very uh, heated and people have very strong opinions about these things. And so the important thing to remember is always be kind to the people you are talking to. Never sort of attack anybody. Philosophy is not about attacking people or going after people. It's okay to sort of attack ideas. So you can take an idea and say, I'm not sure I agree with that. But even that, you don't want to be sort of like vicious about it or mean about it or sarcastic about it. Uh, please always be kind to people. Uh, do your best to state the position that you're talking about in uh, charitable terms. So be nice when you're describing what they say rather than uh, not being nice. So uh, that's just to say at the outset, uh, always be kind when you're discussing philosophy. And so finally, moving into the uh, sort of more detailed section of this lecture, I'm going to go through the syllabus and talk about things. Before I do that, just initially on the structure of the course, so I'll record lectures like this and post them on Canvas. Those you typically want to watch before the relevant stuff, so watch the lecture for some reading before you do the reading. Then you'll do the assignments for the reading that are linked to that, and then you'll come into class and talk about that. So the basic structure of this course is that most weeks are going to be more or less uh, the same. There's not a lot of um, variation in assignment structure. The variation is in uh, what we're studying. And so that's the basic picture to have in mind. So you go on Canvas and you look at what you have for that week, and it's typically going to be more or less the same per week. And now I'm going to go through the syllabus. If you want, you can stop watching here. You can just read the syllabus yourself and get most of this. But I'll talk through the syllabus and perhaps answer some questions you might have. And of course, if you have more questions, you can uh, ask me at some point. So uh, what is this course? We're going to learn about philosophy. We're going to sort of get a scattering of some philosophical topics, get used to reading and writing and thinking about it and talking about it. It's going to be all online, of course, unfortunately. So we have uh, one, two, three, four sorts of assignments in the course. So we have reading quizzes. The reading quizzes you'll do while you're doing the reading. So I encourage you to have the reading quiz kind of open on your computer, or maybe look at the reading quiz first before you do the reading. Uh, and the reading quiz will guide you through the reading. So it's not to uh, sort of test how much you can memorize or something. You don't do the reading and then take the quiz. Rather, the reading quiz points you towards important parts of the reading. Sometimes it can be tough to tell, like, what are the important parts? What are the unimportant parts? What do I need to understand? What can I sort of not understand or spend less time trying to puzzle out? So that's one of the things the reading quiz is for. It points you towards parts of the reading to focus on. Another thing the reading quizzes do is that they give you instant feedback on whether or not you've understood the reading. So these readings are very difficult. Philosophy is always really hard to read. And so the nice thing about the reading quiz is you come up with your own thoughts about what the reading says, you put those in the quiz, then you submit the quiz, and if the answers all are all correct, then great, you understood the reading. If not, you get a, si a sign that, oh, this part of the reading I thought it said this, but actually the reading quiz said it said this. So this gives you some instant feedback to help you adjust what the reading was saying in your head. So that's what the reading quizzes are for. They guide you through and they get you some feedback. I can't uh, guide you to every important part of the reading sometimes, so sometimes it's just hard to write a multiple choice question about an important thing on the reading. So don't ignore a section on the reading just because it's not on the reading quiz. Uh, but these are uh, sort of a scaffolding to help guide you to some of the important things. Another assignment focused on the reading is the perusal annotation assignments. So all of our readings are on this website called Perusal, which what it lets you do is it has the reading up on the screen, and then you can highlight parts of the reading and type comments, and then you can see your comments and then other people's comments, and then you can reply to comments and go back and forth and things like this. So it lets us have a sort of collaborative conversation focused on the reading. Uh, so I really like Perusal, uh, and I'm happy it exists. I wish it had existed back when I was a student. So. We're going to do this for all of the reading assignments that we have. Those are the assignments focused on the reading. There's one of those assignments for each of the readings. So each week we have two readings, one per day, um, that we meet. And then each of those readings has a quiz and a perusal assignment. 
We also have papers in the class. So first, we're going to write four sentence papers. So there's lots of details about the structure of the four sentence papers on Canvas, and we'll talk about those more when we get close to them, or maybe I'll record a video about those when we get close to them. But these are the sort of initial papers that you'll write to get feedback on your writing and get used to writing. There's four of those, and then the lowest scoring paper will be dropped. So you could write three if you wanted to. I recommend writing four. Um, the course is sort of designed uh, so that the workload is acceptable if you write four, hopefully. Uh, but if that's not possible, you can still get a perfect score with three uh, perfect four sentence papers. It's hard to write perfect papers though. After those, you'll write 500 word papers. So these are slightly longer papers and slightly more focused papers. Uh, we'll talk more about those as we get close to them. Again, on Canvas, there's a very detailed rubric, so uh, go check that out. There are also sample papers for each of these kinds on Canvas, so you can look at that. And then for discussion participation, you have three options. You can just participate in class. So in class meetings each week, we'll meet twice, and you can just come and talk. What does participation look like there? Well, it's sort of speaking up try to aim for at least once or twice a sort of substantive comment, so saying something more than just a sentence or two uh, in class. That sort of counts as full participation for that day. There's more details about this on Canvas. Another option is you can watch the class recordings and then write a response post. There's details about what that entails on Canvas. Or you can sort of forget the in class meetings, you can just write on Canvas a discussion question about the readings for that week or uh, respond to people's discussion questions about the reading for that week. So uh, to get full credit for participation, uh, I think like for a week, basically, you do two things. So like participate in each class or participate in one class and then write a response post or something like that. The details are on Canvas and check those out. So uh, plagiarism is very simple. If you're using information that you did not think up, it didn't come from your head, you cite the source. I don't really care how you cite it. The format of your citations is not important. But just whenever it's something that's not coming from you, tell us where it's coming from. So provide a citation. On Canvas, uh, there's a link near the top to set up office hours with me. I'm using like a Google Calendar thing. So uh, if you want to meet during my scheduled office hours, just click that and pick a time. You can also meet outside my office hours. Just email me and say, Professor, I'd like to meet at some other time. And then my website, which is dannyweltman.com or danielweltman.com slash resources.html has some resources. And I think the most important, there's a glossary on that page with unfamiliar words and terms. So sometimes in philosophy, philosophers will use words or terms that are not common, or they use common words or terms in weird ways. A lot of those show up in our readings. So I would look at the glossary uh, once or twice or a lot whenever something confusing comes up. We have colloquium talks here at Ashoka. So these are talks where a professor from some other university comes and gives a talk. Those are, of course, online this semester. And since we're in an introduction to philosophy course, I encourage you to come to some of these talks if you're able to. Uh, these are nice because they're also a sort of introduction to philosophy. They're a very uh, kind of focused sort of thing because the professor is giving a presentation of their own research and then people ask questions about that. So you can see what people, what sort of philosophy people are up to right now as we speak. So the, the cutting edge of philosophical research. And then, uh, as I've said earlier, I've picked out the initial readings that we're doing, but after that, we're going to vote on topics to read. If you have ideas for more topics that you'd like, uh, to possibly be included in the vote, please let me know as soon as possible because I want to vote pretty quickly on the topic so that I can start setting up all the stuff on Canvas. And then also I need time to find some readings if it sounds like it's a good topic to include. So if there's something about philosophy you've always wanted to study and it would make a good topic for our course, uh, let me know and maybe I can include it in the vote. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you either in class or on Canvas or something like that. And uh, bye.